This is the WHTC Morning News with Gary Stevens and Peg McNichol on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. We welcome you back to the WHTC Morning News for this Friday, August the 6th. Friday mornings at this time, we travel Michigan with Pure Michigan's Dave Lorenz. He joins us this morning. David, good morning. Hope all is well with you good. as uh, you're back in your local haunts because you got a busy weekend ahead of you. I, uh, I have had a busy week and I have a busy weekend ahead of me. Absolutely true. And I am uh, actually at the home office this morning, but Shortly after we talk, I'm heading up to Traverse City for some activities and meetings and media uh, activities. And then I rush back home late tonight. And then at seven in the morning, I'll head to Grand Haven because we'll need to start getting ready for the big parade for Coast Guard Festival in Grand Haven. You can probably hear <clears throat> my voice sounds a little tired. It's been one of those weeks, Gary, but this is what I've been looking for for the last year and a half. So I'm happy to uh, be able to be uh, at Coast Guard Festival uh, all day tomorrow, the big parade starting at one or 1230 or I, I, you know, I don't even know when it starts, but you know, you're going to know when you're there <laughs> because there are a lot of, a lot of people going to be there as well. And I think, you know, I've been announcing the parade from the grandstand. This will be my 34th year. And I'm really looking forward to it because just as we see during tulip time and during these other big community events, when people come together in this way, it's not just a celebration to have fun and for entertainment. This is an, uh, an opportunity to demonstrate what's truly uniquely important to your community. And for, for Grand Haven, that does mean this very special connection with the Coast Guard. Um, I, was, I was happy to be um, connected with uh, 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 well, Congressman Ambassador Hookstra last night. We talked a little bit at the Heroes and Legends Banquet. And it was nice to be reminded that when he was congressman, that's when the uh, Grand Haven community was named officially by act of Congress, Coast Guard City, USA. You see, there are about 29 Coast Guard cities in the country. These are communities that, that uh, host uh, the Coast Guard in one way or the other, and they're proud of their affiliation. But the connection here with Grand Haven really is different. It goes back well before the sinking of the Escanaba, but when the Escanaba sunk, I think it was 102 men on board and all of them local during uh, escort duty in the Atlantic in World War II, that cemented forever this connection with the Coast Guard and Grand Haven. When things that traumatic happen and, and then when you know the, the rest of the story, so to speak, when the community came by and, and paid for war bonds to build the next Escanaba, and then of course helped with the new Escanaba, which is based in Boston today, you know that, that really says a lot. Um, and I can't wait to be able to celebrate it again after a year of pause. Yeah, it would be kind of nice. Also, yeah, I know the Escanaba's in Boston. Yeah, you know something, it would be nice if they're gonna retire it Put it in Escanaba. Why not? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, this new ship, though, I was there at the uh, christening, so it's going to be many, many years before that's retired. Um, that uh, ship is—I um, don't remember what you call it—a fast attack cutter, I think it is. And um, it, it's a—it's a beautiful ship. It has been to Grand Haven before. Uh, I understand the Mackinac is uh, in town, uh, today. I wasn't uh, here this week for the parade of ships. So I don't know exactly how many ships or which ships are here, but you'll remember the Acacia used to be based in Grand Haven. Now it's up in Charlevoix when was it the Mesquite? I don't remember which ship, but there was an accident uh, in Lake Superior years ago and the Coast Guard lost a cutter. Um, no, no uh, injuries, thank goodness. But they, they lost the cutter. And when that happened, they had to realign the fleet. So Grand Haven, after being for years the host of a Coast Guard cutter, they had the Woodbine, of course, the Acacia. And what was the ship in between? Oh, my gosh, my memory's gone. But, um, you know, that was a little traumatic for Grand Haven to lose its, its uh, Coast Guard cutter. But there's still an uh, important uh, 
um, Coast Guard assets there. And we're happy to see that. So you need to come to Grand Haven today. Four o'clock is the National Memorial Service. And I know they'll be honoring uh, one young lady who lost her life. Um, and I learned all about her last night. Her mother is in town. Very sad story. She was um, uh, in air service. And I don't know the details, but there was an accident and she passed away and such a young, vibrant person. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just a reminder that even when we're not in wartime, our, our active service is always in peril because of the things they need to do. So I'm really happy to see us um, honor her and uh, all the other uh, persons who've, who have gone over the bar, so to speak, in service to the country. One final thing, Dave Lorenz, uh, I want to get your thoughts about something that uh, New York Mayor, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced this week. The Empire State New York is launching what is being called the Excelsior Pass Plus in an effort to boost the return of tourism and business travel. Similar to how it's used for entry at concerts and sporting events, the pass will indicate a traveler's COVID-19 vaccination status. Cuomo's office calls it the nation's first such platform that's recognized by other states and countries. The pass will be used on American Airlines direct flights to Greece, France, Spain, Italy, and the Bahamas, and on indirect flights to El Salvador, Germany, Guatemala, Honduras, and Puerto Rico. Should we start thinking about something like that for Michigan or what? Well, you know, when it comes to um, the thought about, in effect, vaccine passports is what we're talking about um, at the domestic level. Uh, and in fact, the New York mayor is talking about um, requiring vaccines for people basically to visit the city. Uh, that gets into some really touchy um, uh, points because of uh, religious freedom and because of other health issues. And let's face it, we think we know a lot about this virus now. We think we know that uh, of course, if you had the vaccine, I'm absolutely confident that, that you are as safe as you can be. But we, we, there are other things that we don't really know a lot about. Like for instance, if you have been sick and you have natural immunity, you know, so is it, is it necessary for you to have your shots? Talk to your doctor, ask them. Uh, they, they'll likely tell you yes, but there might be some situations where you shouldn't. I'm no doctor. So I guess I, I don't like the idea of domestic vaccines um, being mandated for everything just to be in a community. That said, uh, I am absolutely in favor of requiring vaccines for international travelers coming here. You'll see that Europe is now opening up, Canada is now opening up to our visitation to them, to them with vaccination. So I'm absolutely in favor. And in fact, I've been recommending it for weeks through U.S. Travel Association's advocacy efforts to try to get um, our uh, federal um, folks to, to, to put this together. So we'll see if that happens. I frankly think it will, and I'm, I'm hoping it'll happen soon. He is Dave Lorenz. He joins us Friday mornings to talk about travel and tourism in Michigan. Dave, have a good trip to Traverse City and enjoy the Coast Guard Festival tomorrow. And if all goes well, let's do this again next Friday morning. Semper Paratus. See you then. Thank you very much, Dave Lorenz on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.